What's going to happen? Think real estate 2024 predictions. Let's have right. some fun. What, uh, so ben? I think I mm. think rates are going to come down probably sooner than expected. Okay. Um, and it's I, very general. That's well. <laughs> nice. He's really people, people are saying, himself out there. People are saying <laughs> yeah. like Q3. I think it'll probably be Q2, and it'll be probably be hard and fast. That's my prediction. I thought that there was it would continue with the the current rate situation until June. I would say Q1 we may see a very slight like quarter point adjustment. All right. Mm -hmm. Which okay. will make trigger to because I see the you know we're talking about buy opportunities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. per, you know personally right now. Yeah. I'm telling the buyer side we've got about 6 months of a slower market where there are some great potentially some great buying well, opportunities. And what I tell people This is my time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jordan. I was going to add to your point. My addition to your very good point was the market's going to turn and it's going to turn like that. I don't know when, but it will probably be February to March. No, I think it's going to, going to be a slow market in the first quarter. Okay. And I don't know that it's going to be on fire in spring. Uh, obviously, it depends on the rates, mm -hmm. uh, mortgage mm -hmm. rate situation. If there is a small, I would say 50-50% chance that it's going to be a, a quarter point, uh, I think the market is going to slowly start to pick up. I don't think it's going to go overnight. You don't overnight. think it's going to I don't snap? think it's going to go overnight. Mm -hmm. huh. There is a lot of people on the sidelines. Well, yeah. Again, maybe two different markets. Yeah. Paul, in our tr traditional market of upsizers, yes, I think yeah. you're right. I think in the condo market, where there's, there's so much there's so much supply in the market, that'll mm -hmm. take more time. So, uh, mm -hmm. but then by June, I think everything is going to be picking up. I'm agreeing with you in general, but I think there's, <laughs> no, but I think there's a different sentiment with people in general. I, I don't think we're going to have the feeding frenzy. Mm. Uh, where everywhere we go and every dinner party and every drink people are coming over and talking to us about the market. I mean, that's all fine, but I don't think it's going to be the frenzy that we saw. Well, I hope we don't have the frenzy. We don't want that. Yeah. By the way, we never liked that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's no. not fun. No, it's not. January 2020, I listed a condo, had 100 showings in two days. Yeah. 100 <laughs> showings. We sold it in two days. Yeah. It closed a week later. Yeah. So, you know, that's... I always go back to that those buyers haven't evaporated they're still out there yeah mm -hmm. so we don't, we don't like that extreme situation though either i mean no getting I back to our, that was I, I wouldn't even say this is an extreme situation now no. it's mm -hmm. this is actually balanced yeah this is i, I don't actually, mind i don't especially mind if you're that. buying it's great i agree yeah. and having these clauses and things in there yeah. um, actually protects people and these are good things yeah and it protects when, sellers too it's yeah. better to find out any issues up early than when you're at close. Yeah. So yeah. I'd say right now is actually a balanced market and it's not a bad thing right now. Yeah. yeah, but if we're talking predictions, I think it could get lagged, but I think it'll switch. But quick. you're saying real quick. I don't think hmm. so. I, I, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, something that we haven't brought up. <laughs> it could up. be the third, the third, <laughs> the third voice. And I, I do, I do think uh, my prediction would be pretty similar to what Jordan's looking at. But uh, in particular, I want to think about some of the first-time home buyers, mm -hmm. and I think there's going to be some good opportunity for them because what we haven't really talked about here is buyer sentiment. And a lot of first-time home buyers are obviously scared right now. Yeah. But a lot of them are in a place where they've been working for a few years, if not longer. They've got some money saved up and they've got decent paying jobs. Mm -hmm. So what they're going to want to see is once they've weathered this potential recession, mini recession that we're going to see over the next six months, let's say, they get on the other side of that and they say, oh, I've got to keep, I get to keep my job. That hasn't changed. Sure. Sure. Maybe it's time to buy a house yeah. now or a yeah. condo, yeah. which those condo prices are cheaper and looking more affordable. What do you think if they change some of the banking rules as well to qualify, would yeah. particularly maybe help on the first time buyers? They haven't it's, changed that. Yeah. But. yeah, I mean, hey, if that that's a prediction or maybe a hope. There's a lot of mortgages coming due around March of this year mm -hmm. as yep. well, right? There's going to be... So that's why they're saying it might come down a quarter point just to help out some of these yeah. people. Is there anything else? I mean, Paul, you're really on top of this stuff that the government may put in to ease things on people so that they're not uh, in a crunch. When we're talking about rates, we're talking about variable rates, right? Yes. I think the yield curve is actually changing already mm -hmm. and you're seeing five year fixed rates come down significantly right yeah. so I think that there will be some market adjustments already along with that do you see the government potentially intervening if they start seeing more people 
people going bankrupt or what have you. If in that squeeze, I, mean, <laughs> I would like to think they could react that yeah. quickly, but they seem reticent to yeah. <laughs> do anything with yeah. any degree of speed, other than jack up interest rates. Yeah, five percent any less in a year. So yeah. well, there's, there, I mean, there's definitely talk of it, and you know, when you talk to mortgage brokers and what have you, they're starting to look at their portfolios and going, "Wow, you know." <laughs> Yeah. Right. And, a and, qualifying and, rate of nine percent doesn't really make sense. No. Yeah. Really, for anybody. So. No. Exactly. Yeah. I, I guess what I'm saying is there could be wild cards to what we're talking yeah. about. That yeah. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think those wild cards would probably come from the government, just like uh, you know yeah. the bank rates or what have you. Yeah. There are some things there yeah. that that may or may not um, impact what we're talking about here that yeah. that come from intervention. Well, and like no joke aside, real estate is controlled by the government, right? They mm -hmm. control the rates, they control the, more, the lending rules, uh, they control new construction. Like taxes. Taxes. Yeah. It's basically a government game, so, you know, you're right. Any any of the changes of yeah, those Yeah, sure, things, even locally. Yeah, 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 yeah locally. even locally. Yeah, yeah. municipalities yeah. always control. Yeah. If you're talking about mm -hmm. building, if you're talking about building, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all about... Like transfer trans taxes, like, yep. you you do also do condos, but you do rentals too. What, what do you right. think? The rental side? I, you know, genuinely what I would like to see for rentals is a stabilization. Yeah. I think we see too much um, fluctuation in terms of seasonality when it September comes to rentals. First. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, is that uh, what you're thinking it's, about? It's so difficult because <laughs> you'll see a two bedroom on September 1st go for $4,000 and a month later it'll go for $3,000 yeah. for essentially the same thing. Yeah. And that's difficult when you need something in a certain time of year. Uh, that being said, I don't think it will change because that seasonality. Are you seeing a change around. in profile? Are you seeing more people come, you know, back I, downtown? Are you seeing? I do think uh, we're gonna need to have a reckoning with um, how landlords vet clients as much as anything else, because right now you have to be triple A of yes. the best. You have to have an eight hundred yes. plus credit score. Yes. You have to yes. make a hundred thousand dollars a year to rent. A studio box. It's, it truly you know? is. It's easier to buy than it is to rent. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It's true. It's true. It truly true. is. Yeah. And, and part of that is the, is the 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 rules, right? Yeah. The landlord yeah. tenant board. Yeah. Which I personally think we need a different set of rules for small landlords. Yes. For those reasons. Right? Yeah. I mean, there's there's so many great people that come to this city that move to this city that maybe don't even have credit scores mm -hmm. or yep. what have you, right? They might be missing one step of the qualifications which can exclude people from some great housing that they objectively are qualified for. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, mm -hmm. the landlord and tenant, being yeah. us being landlords, yeah. is so frightening yeah. to not get the per you know an absolute AAA tenant because it can be yeah. a disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, and it actually makes it harder. <laughs> well, it's curbing supply. Too. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Why do you, why do you, also so many people wouldn't have gone to Airbnb if they didn't yeah. You know, yeah. didn't have yeah. these. I situations. mean a lot of people who they want to be landlords. They would much rather have their basement apartment be for yeah. students or what have you, but they they look at how complicated it can be yes. compared to an Airbnb mm -hmm. and they opt for the latter. Or they opt like a lot of People we know just say no. I don't want. I don't want anyone living in my house. Yep. It's too complicated. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't want to go through that. Yeah. So again, maybe more of a hope rather than a prediction. <laughs> but I would love to see some common sense changes when it comes to how are. those interactions happen, so we can open it up for the broader group of people that should have access to housing. In summary, what we're saying is, if you're looking to buy, I mean, we typically say now's the time to look. But honestly, I don't think there's going to be a better time. Um, at worst, it's gonna go sideways, not down. Yeah, uh, it's, it's be prepared, right? It's be prepared. Yeah, keep your powder dry. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Like, we'll get to, out there and look at properties. No, like, you thing know. is, talk to us. Yeah, get your financing, your mortgage situation in order, and be ready to go. Um, just a, it's all about planning. Sit down with with us. We're not here to send you sell you a house tomorrow. It's about planning. It's about yeah. project management. Let's sit down, lay out a plan, whether you're buying or you're selling, and there's various steps along the way that um, you know we can talk to you about. Hope you found that hugely helpful. Welcome to 2024. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. And here's yeah. to a good 2024. Yeah. yeah.